welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you very much for making a point of keeping time and coming into the studio. So first and foremost, if you're just locking in, this is Liz Lenjo. So you're the chairperson for the Copyright Tribunal. Tell me about what the Copyright Tribunal is. For someone who's just woken up, he's, they've been under a rock. What is yeah. the Copyright Tribunal and what does it do? Okay, so... Uh, the Copyright Tribunal is basically a specialized court okay. um, that listens to, it should listen to more, mm-hmm. but currently under the Act, yes, um, it listens to issues of either licensing from Kenya Copyright Board, specifically for CMOs. Uh-huh. So like CMOs need licenses uh, from Kekobo. Okay, now yeah. when you when you start doing <laughs> CMOs, CMOs, what is a CMO? So collective management organizations, okay. these are organizations in place that mm. um, administer rights on behalf of artists. Okay. So we have camp for mm-hmm. producers, music producers. Yes. Then we have Prisk, Prisk. for performers. Mm-hmm. And then we have MCSK for music composers, yes. arrangers, mm. and publishers. Okay. Yeah. So these guys need to be licensed because mm. they are in, in, in existence on behalf of a certain people. So yes. they need to be regulated and Kekobo is a regulator. Mm. So they need to get a license and they usually have certain things they need to check before they apply for a license. Are they paying royalties? Mm-hmm. Are they communicating to their members? You know, are they transparent? All that stuff. Yes. So Kekobo does that, yeah. So in the instance now a CMO feels like uh, that Kekobo has been too strict or mm. is giving some you know, impractical um, impositions Decisions. or whatever, they, they, they come to the to the board. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if a license has been has not been issued and they feel it's unfair, they come to the board, to, yes. to the tribunal. And then CMOs who also license the music, if you as a user, you're not getting access to this music or content, yes. then you come to us as well. Uh, if they're giving you some weird impositions as well, you're like, ah, that doesn't make sense. You mm. come to us and say, yo, this guy's, mm. and yeah, what they're asking for doesn't make sense. It I just want to license this music. I want to use this music. Mm. And we listen to that and determine whether it was a fair decision or not. not. And then we also determine what is fair compensation Mm -hmm. if um, a musical works is used in a broadcast without the musician's uh, consent. consent. Yes. However, that could be broad because you see at the end of the day, copyright protects artistic works, musical works, Mm. photography, software, uh, you know, sculptures, architecture. So all this stuff Mm. can be used without anyone's authorization, right? So even them, they should fall in that category and we we should be able. But for now, the the act only says musical works in a broadcast. Ah. For now. For now. (laughs) So that's quite interesting. I'm glad that you've uh, mentioned that, right? So we'll get back to that music bit, right? But I see it quite often, especially with content creators right now, whenever their images have been used without them you know, being consulted, right? Mm-hmm. Like you see a company use their their pictures, right? Something that they've probably produced and they've not been given credit. And some companies now making money off of that work, yeah. right? So how does that go? How, how, what, what's the procedure with that? So um, right now, because we don't have you know, legal jargon, that jurisdiction, mm. that yes. power. Yes. Um, they could still come for advisory mm-hmm. to the tribunal. Mm. Uh, but we always tell guys, you know what? Social media is not the court, uh, your court of whatever. It's, yes. You know, because guys, it has a court of public opinion, but it, it doesn't put food on the table, right? It you yes. have to be smart with your bu- uh, business decisions. Mm. So even before you start yelling on social media, take a back seat and say, hey, you know, I want to make money, right? So what is the best way to do this? Because <laughs> we see guys destroy their goodwill. Yes. Uh, you know, you know, you just look like this guy who just likes Kelele. You're like always yelling at people ambulance in chaser. ambulance, you know? Yes. So I'm like, you know, chill out, man. When you see your copyright has been infringed, take a back seat and say, hey, how can I make money? Mm-hmm. Do, I, do I have the expertise? No, call my buddy and say, hey, I heard you have a lawyer. Can, you, my, can your lawyer help me or whatever? Yes. You know, go on Google, find the perfect lawyer. Do something, but get mm. someone who will help you yes. make that money, right? Okay. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> you know how you've said money, you had my attention. So um, so that's that's for the artists and all of that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, in this very creative environment, I'm glad that you even said sculptors and all of those different kind of people. Are there plans to get all of these creators in the fold? Yes, definitely. Because... Mm. Um, 
that is what we want. We want at the end of the day, mm. the tribunal is so robust that that is the first place yes. any creative has a dispute to come to. Mm. Yeah, but you see, the act has been there for a while yes. since uh, the, when the amendments are done in 2001, 2002, thereabouts, mm. and for a long time Kenyans didn't know about it, right? Yes. Because we've not been having those conversations, we've been shy about it, and now people know. And the more people, you know, when you test drive a moti, right, mm. a car, mm. then you know, oh, I need to, shocks. you know, shocks. Yeah. I need to do. This, that. this, this, that, yeah? yeah. So if you just drive this law as well and these regulations that we're putting together, mm. then in a couple of months we'll be able to say, oh, this is not working. Can we add X, Y, and Z? Yes. So that's why for now we have we have now the regulations that um, give teeth to the tribunal as far as what we can do is concerned right now. Mm-hmm. And then when people now use it and they realize, oh, but you guys could do this. Why don't you? Then we're able to even, you know, go to parliament and say, you know what? I think it's important we do X, Y, and Z because the industry needs it. They're coming to us, but we can't help because our hands are tied. Yes. Let's amend the law. And then when that happens again, we, you know, come have another conversation and say, hey, now we're changing the law. Mm. You, you asked. We, have, we are delivering. Please confirm that you're happy with what we're trying to do put a stamp on it, we have a new law, we have more robust uh, protection, yeah. and we're good to go. Now, let's take it back to the beginning, mm-hmm. right? In case uh, you've just locked in, I can see Alan who sent me a message, I'll read it in a bit, where we've got Liz Lenjo, she's the chairperson of the Copyright Tribunal. I get to see this word being thrown all over social media. You see when people say, oh, that is my intellectual property, this and all of that. What is the layman Mm -hmm. definition of intellectual property okay so the layman definition of intellectual property Mm. is the creations of the mind yes then intellectual property law helps protect the creations of the mind Mm -hmm. we always hear people say oh i want to patent an idea Mm. we don't patent idea we protect the expressions of it or how the uh, idea is you know in actualized right yes so under ip law we have patent which is the highest form of protection Mm -hmm. and it's because you're the first person in the world to have ever done what it is you're doing right okay so in 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 uh, jargon it, it has to be new and novel never seen before uh, and then has to be industrially applicable for us. So mm. which means that it has this industrial element, there's some tech, mechanical, mm. um, scientific solution that you're offering yeah, for you to qualify for a patent. Yes. And then you have protection for 20 years in the whole world. Right. Oh, wow. So that's huge. Yes. So, but it's the most misused term because I think guys are like, oh, patent has a strong term. Mm. Um, yeah, so by now copyright is now what belongs to more of the creative side in terms of creative uh, expression of the ideas. You know, we can have like two soap operas with similar uh, mm. scripts, but mm-hmm. they're different stories, right? So because expression is different, yeah? Yes. And then there's the element of fixation when in copyright. So once it's moved from the head, it's an idea, then you write it. Like let's say you have a poem, the uh. minute you write it, uh. by you writing it, it's called a fixation, then it's now protected, it's automatically protected. It can be protected when it's here. Uh. And then, you know, when people say, oh, I have a way you can revolutionize business, it's a business model, it's yes. a format. Unfortunately, those ones are like really raw ideas, they're concepts. Uh-huh. They don't have a space in, in protection, in copyright. Yes. But there will be other ways you can do it, uh, depending on what you want to do. For example, it could be, you know, you've done some research and you're able to say, you know what, Trace, if you did this, mm. you'll make five million bucks in a day. Yeah. yeah. Because there's some research element and whatnot and I want to bring this to the table, it's not protected per se under copyright, but, you know, with a lawyer, a non-disclosure agreement mm-hmm. can just uh, come in play to protect you, to, you know, to protect what you've done so far yes. and the research that you've done and all these things that you're bringing to the table and then you're protected. So it will depend on the different things. So if you're even pitching a show to mm-hmm. a TV station, for example, this is their ordinary business, right? Yes. So how are you going to say you brought this uh, script to them or this idea and of this I, show? I was actually getting to that, right? Because a lot of young people out here, you know, entrepreneurs going to school, some some are just trying, right? In this world, there's really no formula. If I write a business idea, let, let me say, for instance, to Trace, uh, I write a business proposal proposing this and that and what, and I don't hear from the company, the said company, Company, right and in a couple of months I see that they've deployed my said idea but I hadn't come to the lawyer or gotten in touch with uh, you know go, follow the procedure right yeah is there a way I can still go back and say that is my idea because I wrote it on email I think it will depend with the circumstances mm. 
Um, but you see also they're likely to say, you know what, this is our cause of business. We've mm. actually been doing this. So how then do you prove that? And especially when there's been no response on email. Yes. Because <laughs> that's what normally happens. Yes. Guys are so excited. Send mm. an email. Say, let me send an email to Calvin and mm. <laughs> he'll be the next best thing. Yes. You know, and then how do you know Calvin wasn't thinking about it? Mm. You know, I would rather be more uh, uh, formal about it or or structured cautious because mm. you see we say my ip is my shamba it's, it's my it's like a land right yes. so there is no way i'll just wake up and say yo calvin take the shamba and and you know dig mm. without asking you so you know what are you planting can we share profits or whatever or pay me rent mm. you know that's those the kind can, of approach yeah. you need to have with your intellectual property yeah. so even those that do not fit in the strict sense of say copyright for example that's what you want to do because you did your homework maybe you're a data scientist and you're able to tell if i uh, based on this data if i do x y and z it will change this and make more money and blah 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 because it's not strictly under the you know but you know you you make it sound perfect i have to say yeah but in this uh, especially in this creative sector um it's very informal yeah there's a lot of people now ask for contracts and this and say okay pass this contract date i won't be able to do this and what and what all of those things but we're dealing in a sector that is way more informal than formal so i believe there's a certain amount that i have to pay for me to register my ip and all of that right yeah so does does that amount of okay let's let's use the the narrative right now mm-hmm. in this hustler situation you get so the hustle probably needs an amount of money to be able to make their idea go big right mm-hmm. but you're telling me they still need to be able to register to protect their intellectual property so yeah. Like, what are those costs? Let's even start there. <laughs> so the costs will vary depending on the type of IP that you want. And mm-hmm. I barely scratched the surface when I talked about what other IPs are there. We have trademarks. For yes. example, the name Trace is a trademark, right? Yes, it is. It's the brand that you create. Mm-hmm. So when you have a business, maybe you'll need that brand. Chances are you'll need that brand because mm-hmm. that's how people identify you. That's how you stand out in the market. Yes. Yeah, then, you know, you're in, you're in the creative industry. Maybe you need to register a to your music or to mm-hmm. your film or whatever. Um, so it's identifying fast in a natural those needs but if you're in a situation where you don't have capital or money mm. and let's say you're like a crew let's say like we're creatives we're musicians and maybe we, we don't have all the resources we can pull resources together and say hey we can pull 50k yes let's holler at a lawyer to come mm. and help us and figure it out and you, you see you just make your case ask and you shall receive you know guys imagine that all oh, lawyers are these huge monsters Qu- quick, quick question <laughs> 30, you know, yeah you know respect my hustle i respect your hustle so if you tell me and yeah Liz, all i have is 20 g's yes. but i help me understand x y and z I'm human. Uh-huh. All lawyers are human. They'll be able to say, you know what? Okay, fine. You need the information. Let me help you. Yes. And then as, I, as I'm helping you, I might even believe more and perhaps figure out how I can work with you and you pay me later. Yeah. But you see, if, I, if you just sit down and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have the money. Because I feel, I feel like for the common one, ain't you? Whenever they hear the word lawyers, yeah. hey, <laughs> lawyers are involved in this. Or yeah. my lawyer will call you. You want the easy way out. Yeah. So I think those are some of the things that, um, you know, have really, uh, you know, have not made it black and white, literally, yeah. right? So tell me about public participation because I know you guys are out here doing a lot for, you know, the tribunal regulations and all of that. What is it that is ongoing and mm. what is the aim? Okay. So first of all, public participation is the process in which we we onboard mm. Monainchi, the, yes. the Kenyans, to be part of the, you know, process of making laws and regulations, right? Mm. Because the law is for the people by the people, right? So we are just like a mouthpiece. We're spearheading, but we're bringing it to you and saying, hey, this is what we can think can benefit you. Does it make sense? Mm. Yeah. Um, So right now we have the regulations, um, which will help the Copyright Act have teeth. Just a second. Mm -hmm. So who helped come up with the regulations? So the tribunal, together Uh with the Kenya Law Reform Commission, we came together. To draft. So in, in, in any act, in any piece of legislation, it normally yes. says that once the act is passed, there'll be regulations that are drafted, going, drafted to support and give teeth to this yes. act so that now it can move, it can have power, it can have force. And then after that is when you go for public participation. Yes. So we have the draft 
So the draft is based on the research, we review the law, what does the law want us to do, what does it want to say. Then Kenya Law Reform has the expertise in drafting of these regulations because there are certain ways they have to be drafted, they have certain rules. So they educate us on that and we draft together. Mm -hmm. And then now we bring now them to uh, the public and say, hey, here is a draft. This is a proposal. Uh, here, yeah, this is a proposal. Mm. Does it make sense? Okay. Uh, what, what are we missing? And during that period as well, we get more information in terms of what other needs are there, for example. Yes. And then we're able to say, you know what, as we're passing these regulations, once people are happy with the input, then... Uh, we can now start proposing for any amendments and say, you know what, the law is not enough, mm. the X and Y needs to be added, we have this kind of information. So that also gives us this information and data yes. to be able to go back to Parliament and say, this, this is, is what is on the ground. Yes. Yeah, because the law is supposed to reflect what is on the ground. Mm. Yeah, so with these regulations we have currently for the Copyright Tribunal, mm. we are basically telling Kenyans, we're here. Mm -hmm. This is what we are able to do under the Act. Yes. Can you support? Can you be part of this? Uh, you know, if you have a dispute of this nature, come to us. Mm. And at the same time, because the Copyright Act um, has made us an authority in copyright disputes uh, resolution, right? Mm -hmm. So even though we may not have some jurisdiction in some matters, you could maybe pa perhaps come from advisory or something. Just come and ask and we help you figure it out. We'll find a so solution. Let's use an example, right? These two people are actually my friends. Brian Mutinda, influencer, and... Uh, Nonini, mm -hmm. yes, we saw that whole, uh, my lawyers will be in touch with you. And then there was a said company, mobile phone manufacturer and all of that. And this was because Nonini's song had been used in a video that this influencer was, um, you know, had pushed out, right? And of course, the influencer had been paid money. Now, with that situation, because it's already out there, mm -hmm. how would you go about it? Okay, so let's not comment on that one because it's already in court mm -hmm. and there's usually a, a rule that you cannot discuss matters already in court. Yes. But let's say I use your song mm -hmm. uh, as an influencer, mm -hmm. right? Ideally, first of all, I'm an influencer, I'm influencing, say, for Trees, mm -hmm. yeah? And mm -hmm. then I use your song. Yes. So first of all, uh, the company that hires me, that is Trace, mm -hmm. needed to have had a conversation, a creative brief with me to tell me what I can and can't do. Okay. Which means also Trace has to be aware that if I use any intellectual property owned by a third party, mm -hmm. then they should be able to clear those rights. Yeah, mm -hmm. If it's not yours, you have to clear those rights. Just the way I cannot come into your house without knocking, without your permission. It's the same thing with copyright and other intellectual property rights. Lehman. Yeah. Yes. So they have to come and tell me, yo, Liz, okay, so you're, you're influencing for us. Mm -hmm. What ideas do you have? Then I, I give them in a nutshell. And then they they also have to ask me, so are you going to use music? Are you going to use this? Mm -hmm. And they ask themselves, is this something we can afford, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that now when I use this work on social media, because at the end of the day, when I use your music, I'm using it to advance to, someone to else's lower. business yes, model, yeah, right? Yes. So they are going to make money. So why are you left high and dry? Uh -huh. Me, I'm the middle so man. Is, is there a set percentage of which the the creator mm -hmm. is supposed to get. So the creator in this sense being the, uh, the, the creator of the music. Yeah, so there's no percentage per se, but mm. it's supposed to be a negotiation, okay. right? Because it's also about who am I negotiating with? Mm. How deep is their pocket? How big is their reach or their audience? Yes. What do they plan to do with the, my brand? Mm. You know, sometimes there's some brands you're like, mm, I, I will shy away from as an artist to be associated with. Yes. But if the check is too good, you'll be like, you know what? It's okay. Mm. I can do this for this price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So it's supposed to be that negotiation because it's my property. Mm. Tell me what you want. And let's negotiate and come to an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that has like set percentages and whatnot is now when there's like broadcast music is being used in a broadcast mm. the cmos are the ones who collect yes. the camp risk mcsk mm. trace will pay them mm -hmm. and then uh, mcsk camp risk will pay their members yes and they have their yes their distribution so then they have their regulations now on the ground and say you know what i'm a member i wrote this song it was played here this is what i'm being paid mm -hmm. but on this personal level and there has to be an engagement. So now even the influencer has to know that they have a responsibility. Mm. For the longest time, our influencers have been thinking, ah, this is happy go lucky. Mm. No Kenyan influencers are being sued, but you're in the UK and in the US, they're being sued it's, left, it's right, and center. Because you have to be smart. Yes. You know, you can't influence for Adidas and Nike at the same time, for mm. example. Mm. Yeah. So it means it's the same thing. You have to be very smart. What kind of influencer are you? What kind of content are you going to use? And you, you know, what is the brief you've been given? When they give you the brief, you say, yo, uh, this is my fee, mm -hmm. but for clearing IP rights, this is as this well. This is your duty. You do it. I, you know, because I'm the agent. I'm the middleman. But yeah. unfortunately, if I have not 
cleared the rights and as an influencer as a middleman i'm also liable this is a between uh, trace and myself it's what we call the principal agent relationship uh-huh. and in law uh, a principal will be liable for an agent's yes. actions yes. yeah because i'm acting under the contract and yeah the, under the contract and your instruction yes. so it means both of us have to be on the same tune Line. so right now if if that's the instance you as if, as Calvin have used your music you'll mm. sue me and you'll sue Trace for example where hey <laughs> that is a lesson i love it now as we wind up right and i know a lot of people are going to have so many more questions right uh how can guys get in touch with you and more so we touched on the public participation when is it happening mm-hmm. where is it going to be is it going to be physical online all of these different kind of details okay yeah. so we had our first digital event yesterday mm-hmm. in collaboration with lawyers hub okay. it happened online mm-hmm. so we have a copyright tribunal youtube channel So we already have the link up for what happened yesterday so guys can you know f- you know uh click Go the link watch it. and watch it and mm-hmm. hear what's happening and they can find the document on judiciary.go.ke uh where the regulations are so you, as you're watching maybe you can look at the document and see mm. are they making sense or what not i'll even share the link with you you share with guys yes, yes. to to get to access the regulations um and then we're doing a lot of public participation more online because mm. also budgetary constraints and what not yes. but most people are on the digital space mm. and now collaborations with uh, you know like trace thank you so much for having us we're able to tell kenyans more about what's happening about the law because again yes. you don't know of the law is not defense but how do you know about the law so that's what we're doing we're saying hey here is the law we're bringing the law to Wanjiko. Yeah. We'll have a Twitter space next week mm-hmm. on the 2nd of March in collaboration with Baraza Media Lab so hopefully by tomorrow we'll have Everything. all the posters out and yes. what not. We have more conversations mm. yeah about the regulations about the tribunal what do you need to know what do you think you know how do we uh, dispel some of the myths that you have yeah. and we continue you know growing this space. Right. How I, can people reach us mm-hmm. um if you're going to give comments Copyright at court. Copyright at court. dot geo. dot ke. Uh huh. But you can also hit me up on Instagram, Liz Lenjo Cags, or Facebook or whatever you find me online. I can give you direction all of, all on where direction to go. Direction and everything. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think what we're going to do is we're definitely going to share all of your details because I know there's a lot to learn. But I think more specifically, people need to follow you so that they can always uh, find out where all of this are happening. Baraza Media Lab. Say what's up to them. A very, shall. very effective partner of us guys over here. They they really do a lot, especially in this new digital age of you know learning, right? So those are the kind of organizations we like to work with, progressive and making sure that the creators and the content creators are really moving ahead. Liz, thank you very, very much for coming and breaking down a very complex subject. Thank you for having me. Very, very easy. I feel so. So so energized. I feel like there's money out there to yeah, be there's, made. There's there's lots of money. There's lots of money to be made. Thank you very much for coming through and of course we look forward to the your Twitter space next week. When you have the details make sure you send them to us and we'll, we'll share it with everybody. Definitely I shall.